Welcome back. Now, about two years ago, I invested in an entire Moviel M Cook Series professional cookware. And now after being using them at home, I wanted to give you my opinion and tell you, was it worth it? And what are the pros and cons? And that's what we didn't discover in this video. Let's go. Welcome back. So here we are. Three years ago, I bought an entire uh, Moviel set, I call the M Cook set, because I wanted to go for the professional cookware and have a taste of what the professional are using in their kitchen and could it improve my cooking. So if you haven't seen the video from two years ago, you can watch it if you want with all the excitement. Link in the video description and on the screen. So Moviel, if you don't know, it's the Rolls Royce of French cookware started in 1830. So it goes a very, very long way. And they were first and foremost copper pan manufacturers. Everything was handmade. They still made, of course, uh, today. And it is uh, the most expensive, the most prestigious range. This is here the elite range. Look at this, it's even hammered. This is the, the decor here by, uh, you know, with a hammer by hand. So someone is doing this by hand. And most of the pan, even the stainless steel, are assembled in the factory in Normandy by hand. And this is one of the big signature from this. Now, of course, times have changed. Moviel is now selling stainless steel stuff, also steel on top of the copper. So the standard copper pan that we call the copper pan is a copper pan. The outside is copper. You got the cast iron handle and the inside is lined, I think, with some kind of a tin lining in here and that doesn't stick and you can cook pretty much everything. It's not going to react with the copper. This stuff was the stuff that was actually made and sold exclusively to restaurants, you know, before. There was no way of buying this cookware before if you were not a restaurant. This is why when this series came out, it was, I can use Movia. <laughs> and this is kind of, I felt like this, oh my God, you look at the stainless steel. So obviously then you end up with two choices. And one big question, should you buy the copper series or should you buy the stainless steel series? The stainless steel is marketed as performing the same as the copper pan. And from what I've tried, I can say that no, <laughs> no. It's not the same. They perform great. The stainless steel, it's a, it's a, it's a, they do a great job. They actually can go to temperature as fast as the copper, but the amount of precision and control of your, your heat and how it heats up and the heat dissipates is totally different. The quality and the build is different. It's got a cast iron, solid cast iron handle. Well, this one has got some weird metal kind of cheapo kind of handles. And you can feel it's not as thick, it's lighter, it's just different. The stainless steel costs a lot of money. This is the first thing we can talk about. So when you buy these, like I did, it's a big investment. And the reason I'm saying the copper is better because you can't help <laughs> thinking that once you've got the pan, you've got your m cook pan and you're like, you know that there's something sitting just above. That is just that little bit better. It looks better, it's sturdier, it performs better. And of course, it costs more money, but you bought something that's just not the best. You don't have the number one pan, do you? So it kind of leaves you a little feeling, yeah, that's good, it's good, but there's something above. So I'm saying, if you want to consider Moviel for the performance and other things, I believe, this is just an opinion, it's not a review, in my opinion, in my experience, the copper pan is just better. This is where it's at, this is the true signature from Moviel and get the one with the cast iron handle. This has been performing flawlessly. So for the rest, let's talk about the stainless steel. We're going to spend, uh, uh, not going to spend hours on this. Um, what to expect? You bought the Moviel set, uh, stainless steel, are these going to really improve your cooking like this, blah, 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 etc., etc. Keep in mind one thing. These have been designed with the professional in mind, the professional cooks, and I would say the professional cook mostly, and the home cook a little bit. So what does that mean? That means that you need to know how to use each pan, okay, because there are restrictions, and you need to use them just for what they're supposed to. So each pan, this is the saucepan, this is for kind of a piler, this is just for frying, and this is like a saucier for sauces and stuff. You got the roasting pan, this is for slow cooking, like a rondo, kind of a stock pot, okay? And each pan has been kind of designed to really excel in its own category. But there are, like I said, some restrictions. One of the main ones that I found really hard to deal with was the restriction with heat. 
In the stainless steel series, like the copper, it says you cannot, he you cannot use more than 75% of the maximum power of your burner. That means if your gas burner or induction is going from 1 till 10, you know, like 7, or a bit more than 7, is going to be the maximum you can use. And that gives, for me, a general feel of slowness when you are kind of a home cook that is used to use whatever heat and you take a pan and you're gonna put raging heat and stuff, like here you can't do that because it will damage your pan. And things go from, you use the right amount of heat, it's gonna be a very slow kind of searing, you need to take time, it's like a professional cook, you need to wait, wait, and wait. Let the thing cook, it's like this, you know, wait the thing cook, it's gonna heat up, but you have to wait, you know, don't, don't put the heat too high, otherwise if you do, what's happening, everything sticks, everything burns. So you go from a really nice control kind of heat, and if you go out of the boundaries, you burn everything, everything starts to stick, etc., etc. If you want to go further, I'll give you an example of what happened. This is a normal pan, a saucepan. This is one that I've left on the heat. The water dis uh, evaporated, and I forget it on the heat for a little bit of time on the dry heat on the flame. And look, the color, the whole pan is discolored. The all inside is black, and I scrub it like hell and the handle is totally dislodged. So the pan is really damaged. I had this happen to me with stainless steel pan of mid-range and I didn't have that amount of damage. So just to tell you that it is different. The pans are also built with one piece of metal only. This is something you need to keep in mind. This is one of the big difference, I think. Most of the other pans, they got that tri-ply kind of heavy bottom, you know, something called a sandwich bottom or whatever. There's that thick layer of metal, like a disc, that protects so you got the heat, you got the disc, and then you got your pan. These ones, all of the pan from Movil, it's one piece of metal has been bended, forged, and then riveted with a handle. So the heat goes directly on your pan. This is why you can't put maximum heat. And then the technology of the pan does, the heat dissipates inside. And depending on the type of pan, it's going to dissipate a certain way. Now, I don't know if it's a technology or anything like this, but I bought this. <laughs> it's like, you know, a stock pot. Stock pot, you think I'm going to do everything with this. I thought, oh, this is going to replace my, uh, <laughs> my uh, cast iron Le Creuset. I'm going to do a searing and then put it in the oven. I'm going to do, you know, all kinds of sauces and burnt carcasses and perhaps steaks and chicken like I used to do. Uh -uh. This works only for some reason for like braising and slow cooking. This is what it's supposed to do. It's got a tendency to absorb so much heat that doesn't matter what you do on there, it's always kind of slow, you can see a little bit. And like I said, if you put it too high, it burns. So you're only allowed to sear things, then you put your stock, you put your stuff, you've got a super heavy lid, you put it on, and when it, that goes in the oven and the heat dissipates, it's really built for it, you get a perfectly, you know, braised meat or slow cooked meat, etc. But if you try to use this to, let's say, oh, I'm going to make a pasta sauce and, you know, really sear some uh, mince, uh, mince meat or something like that, the pan doesn't like it. It burns, it starts to color on the sides, there's like all kinds of weird things happening, it sticks everywhere, you know, it doesn't, it's just not built for that. And, and I've experienced this a lot, like the frying pans as well, they work great for like medium heat. When you do like a for instance, like a you know, piece of chicken that has been breaded or something that is very nice, like some potatoes that are kind of a, with lots of fat in there, it can slide to the pan, but as soon as you try to sear a steak and you, you think, oh, I'm gonna put too much heat, whatever. No, it, again, it doesn't work, you know? It's always, you have to stay in that little control. And sometimes it gets some <clears throat> getting used to. So to finish, uh, this is what I would say that my opinion overall is, be careful when you step into the movie. It's not because I bought them that you need to move it, because if you buy them, it is not like the other pans. You need to know how to use them. There's a lot of restriction. You get, there's that feeling of slowness because there's always that, you know, that control you need to have. So it's always a really regulated types of heat. And it's very hard to use one pan to do everything. Each pan has been designed for a certain, a certain task. And if you buy them, there's going to be a big, big learning curve. I am still trying to understand some of these pans out here. So surely, to finish, I would say that perhaps it's me. You know, being a home cook and not being in a professional world, I don't, I don't have perhaps the right oven, the right stove, the right you know, type of heat that is required, or I'm not using it for the right thing. So I'm going to keep on going and exploring, but this is my experience. As I said, this is just 
an opinion, don't be put off at all by thinking, oh, oh you know, uh, if you just bought a stainless steel series, it is fine, but just be aware that there are restrictions and if things are not working out, if things start to stick, if things are not working the way you want, it is surely because you're not using the pan the way they entered it to, and you're not using the pan to cook the stuff that they made to. This is the biggest advice I can give you, okay? Use that for searing, use this for liquid, use this for slow cooking, and use this for uh, stocks and reduction and dummy glass, and so on and so forth. But that completes my little opinion video for this week. And I wanted to do this, it's been two years in the making. If you have any question, reach for the comment section as always. And as for me, I will see you next week for another French cooking video. Take care all, bye-bye.